Joe Turner from Leapfrog Fight TV, and today I'm in London at Sabadi. Is that have I yeah, pronounced Sabadi. it right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With Tyler Hogan, a man that pretty much again just doesn't need any introduction in the UK Muay Thai scene. He's just killing it at the moment. Um, I was just saying to you off camera, it's quite nice to actually speak to you, not as someone you're potentially going to fight one day. Like, yeah, yeah. It's quite nice that we can now kind of just, how are you? We can have that kind of yeah, chat. Yeah. How are you, mate? Yeah, <laughs> you all right? I'm doing good. No, no way you can't for this fight. It's nice. Just chill in, show up, fight, go home. What I kind of, I love about you is the fact that you fought at such a light weight as 59. You are yeah. big for that weight, I, I believe. You're probably one of the biggest ones out there for 59. This weekend you're fighting at 66 kilos, yeah. but you still hold your own at that weight in terms of the sizing. And it, it's just, it's mad to see because me at 66, I'd, I'd be tiny. 59, even even I'm still small then. And it's just great to see how you can kind of adapt as a fighter to just fight anyone, anywhere, always turn up to fight. And you're always ready to fight as well. Yeah, I like, I like to fight. <laughs> Thursday is normally a very stressful part of the week for anyone that knows what the fighting scene's like or if you've fought before, right? Just in general, how are you managing your stress levels this week? Obviously, you said you haven't got a lot of weight to cut, if not any weight to no cut. Weight, yeah, so yeah. Or maybe 100 it, grams. That, that's a, that's a lot of weight off your shoulders, quite literally. Yeah. Right? <laughs> how are you feeling this week in terms of just mentally? Yeah, mentally, it's good. I feel like um, stylistically, I think Justin's a good matchup for me. The, the issues he proposes is more to do with his experience and his uh, size. He's, he's bigger than me, had a lot more fights than me, been around a long time. Was interesting in that regard, and uh, I'm just excited to show that I can do what these other fighters have done to him. Like he's fought top names like Liam Harrison, Malai Peck, Gabriel Varga, and uh, I just want to show like I can I can do what they can do as well. I think you're up there with them kind of guys, mate. You're killing it. You're you're literally breaking people's arms and kicks. <laughs> like you're you're smashing it up quite literally, That's right? It. And it's great to see. Obviously, we've got your big fight with Corey Chettle after yeah. this on Leapfrog Fight Night. Huge, one. huge domestic fight, right? One that I'm really excited for because I've faced Corey. I know he's a great, strong opponent and you're smashing it at the moment. It just, it's just a recipe for a great fight. This weekend with Justin, what can we expect? Uh, is this going out before the fight or after? This, uh, yeah, it's before. going out before the fight. Okay, so don't don't too yeah, I'm going to hit him with a jab. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you off camera what I'll do, but um, yeah, we've got a good game plan. He's had so many fights. I think he's had over 100 fights. But on YouTube, you can see so many fights, so much footage. And for a guy who's been around a long time, I don't think he's adapted his game very much over the years. Um, so I think the flaws he had 10 years ago are the same ones he had five years ago, are the same ones that I'm going to exploit on Sunday. So I'm just, I'm just excited, man. It's, what, what do you know about Oren Moore as a show? Because me and Daniela were discussing it earlier, the amount of A-class fights and the amount of high, high explosiveness, just how good the matches are. Like, oh, they yeah. just, it's, it's going to be a great show. And I was saying I'm really lucky to actually be still in England to be able to watch it at home with my popcorn yeah. because it's going to be a great show. Yeah, it's going to be good. I really like the Oren Moore show. The, the whole main, class, main card is A-class, I think. Um, Something you don't see often. You don't exactly, see that and I think it's, it's great for the development of the sport. I think a lot of shows are out there to make money through ticket sales, playing that short game. Like, okay, let's make a quick turnaround on this event, fifty kids fights, and then put an A class at the end. You know, and I think that's a great way to make a quick turnaround on your event, get people to show up, buy tickets to support their mates or their kids who are fighting. Yeah, of course. But in terms of that, that long game, really building the sport up, showing the quality of events. Uh, shows like Oren Moore do this really well. Like they're putting on top quality events that I think anyone could enjoy. If you're watching uh, these these lower level events trying to make quick ticket sales, it's great to support your mates, but they're not always the most entertaining shows. I think these these high level A class fights, in terms of watchability, like they're they're great. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head in terms of these shows like this show what Muay Thai is yeah. and how good Muay Thai is because it really does show the levels, especially in Scotland and even England, right? They're bringing people from all over to that Scotland. Just shows their levels of how good the sport's getting and how great athletes are becoming. Now they're slowly starting to have a little bit more money pumped in, especially people getting more aware of social media, etc. They're getting a little bit more money to train a bit more, eat, be eat better, get nutritionists, strength and conditioning. There's more accessibility to it. Yeah. And obviously uh, people like Leapfrog Fight TV, come along making it accessible to watch, 100%. bringing more numbers into it, bringing more money into it. It's just amazing and everything's on the up. 
and, it, and it's good to see. You as a fighter, right, this has interested me for a very long time. You're one of those people who I feel, and I, don't, I mean this in zero disrespect, is a dark horse. Yeah. You've always kind of been not in the limelight, but smashing everyone up. Yeah. And I feel like you haven't got the exposure you deserve because you've been beating everyone. Like you've, you've kind of been in there with everyone, never said no to a fight, fighting at any weight you're kind of given. Yeah. Right? And it's great to see. And you, you've kind of just, I wouldn't like to say come out of nowhere, but you've kind of just shot up with how good you're getting. Your fights, where did it begin? Uh, what do you mean, sorry? Where, where did it begin in terms of when did Tyler Hogan put a pair of boxing gloves on? Uh, I've always sort of been uh, a fan of like combat sports in general, not so much Muay Thai. My dad was really into boxing um, and yeah, we just watched fights together and whatnot. And when I was in my early teens, 13, 14 or so, we'd, we'd watch like the big UFC pay-per-view cards together. We'd stay up all night, watch them. And uh, I just enjoyed it. I'm, I mainly wanted to start at first just to be able to defend myself. You know, like I was always a, a smaller kid and, uh, you know, that can obviously uh, bring up insecurity sometimes. Yeah. I just wanted to train to to be able to handle myself, you know. So I uh, just started training, and I did BJJ, Muay Thai, I did some like Krav Maga, just mixed around, did a little bit of everything, and um, eventually I just stuck stuck with Muay Thai. I sort of fell in love with Muay Thai itself, and started fighting, loved it. Kept kept. Going. What was it about Muay Thai? Obviously, you said you trained lots of different disciplines. Um, Why I, did that stick? I think it was at first the fact that the coaching for the Muay Thai was better where I was training. So um, Aaron, the coach I'm still with today, really like uh, helped me a lot. Whereas in the other things, because I was training in adults classes when I was like 15, 14, so um, I wasn't getting like seen too much. They were just like, yeah, let the kid train. Blah, blah, blah. But Aaron really like helped me out, guided me. He was like, do you want to fight one day? I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, but I did it in the end and uh, eventually through training consistently and I think once I got to sparring and I was like fuck it these people giving me trouble let me see let me look on YouTube let me watch some fights let me see how these that's guys when do the bug it. starts yeah. let me start watching the fights that's that's where it started for me how did you get to the point where you're sat there thinking you know I want to give this a go competitively competitively um I say it properly came about after I'd left secondary school and went to sixth form. I got a bit fucked over by one of my sixth forms and had to go somewhere else. And I didn't really know anyone there. I didn't like the subjects I was studying. I was like, ah, like everything shit. I really wasn't happy with how things were going. And Muay Thai was like my salvation at that point. Like a safe space. Yeah, it was, it was the only place I felt welcome. Like I, had, I was at this school. I didn't know anyone. I joined late in the year. No one was really speaking with me. The only place I really felt comfortable was sort of at the gym. And I thought to myself, like, if this is what the rest of my life is going to be, not feeling welcome, not feeling happy, then it's not what I want. And I ended up getting kicked out <laughs> sixth form uh, in halfway through the year. And I went somewhere else for college later, which is really close to my gym now. So I was able to put a lot of focus into Muay Thai and I just... I just really loved it and it, it just helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. Yeah. What kind of sprung the competitive side of Thai boxing for you? Like what what made you kind of what made you go, right, I'm gonna have a fight? Uh probably losing my first fight. So my first proper loss was to Liam Patel, right. who's current UK number one. I was like, ah, I wanna get that back. I wanna get that back. I took a little time out um after that loss because I fought I think it was seven times in four months. So I was I was a bit burnt out by the time I got to that fight. I took some time out, and then when I was ready to jump back in, COVID happened. So I was, I was fucked there. I was like, ah, oh, I just want to fight. I just want to fight. I came back two years after that fight to Liam Patel, ready to finally get, get my revenge. And then I lost to Jacob Thompson. And um, those two losses. I think I fought back. on that card, you know. Yeah, you did. You fought Liam on that card. Yeah, I remember speaking to you after I lost to Jacob. I was quite pissed off sitting in the back. Um, yeah, so I lost those two fights back to back. And I was like, I never want to feel this way again. Like, I, I want to fight. I want to show how good I am. And, uh, yeah, I just kept training. I won another couple after that. Lost a couple. Won a couple. And I've been on a bit of a streak. Got interrupted with a uh, fight with Anthony Deary. But other than that, I've been, I've been good recently. Yeah. What was your first fight? My first fight was against uh, a guy called Luca from Conflict Fitness. Oh, he okay. actually fought the other day. He yeah, won. Yeah. Um, 
that was my first fight. It was K1 Rules on the Shinkick Showdown. Um, you didn't fight on that one, but I remember you were there. Uh, that was my first fight. Yeah, I won that one. What What made you do that first fight? It was just the the right time to fight. So I'd had a couple into clubs, um, and yeah, it was like, do you want to fight? Sure. Um, so I took the fight. Uh, I actually buffed my leg right before that fight, uh, which is when I changed to southpaw. I used to be orthodox for like my first year of training. Bust my leg three weeks before the fight, went to southpaw, and never went back. Obviously, being a southpaw enthusiast myself. Yes, yes. What is it about southpaw that you love? That's the left kick, man. It's always, it's always been even in orthodox switch kicking, switch kicking. Just take out the switch. It it's beautiful, isn't it? It's I nice love, thing. I love my left leg, and without my left leg, I, I think I wouldn't even train anymore. I'd yeah. just give up. I, nice. I would, I would straight up just not do it anymore. Right? Obviously, we've got Sunday. We've got a big fight. Yeah. We've got Corey Chet all coming up as well. Leapfrog fight night. It's going to be unreal. The presentation of the show, just how everything's going to be, is going to be great. I'm so excited. Yeah. Talk to me about Corey. Corey okay. Yeah. What do you know about Corey? Uh, so how, how do you think the fight's going to kind of go? Talk to me. Me and Corey were meant to fight in September of last year. And I had an uh, issue where I had to pull out of that fight. Um, so I, I feel like I do owe a fight to Corey. So I'm glad we can get it done. Initially, I was offered someone else for this date. But um, it didn't work out. Lewis Taylor asked me if I wanted to fight Corey. I was like, of course, I owe him one. Let's, let's do it. Uh, what do I know about Corey? I've watched a lot of his fights. I was meant to fight him before. So I've, I've watched him. Um, again, I don't want to give away too much. I do have, I do have a little bit of a, a plan going into this one. Um, what do you want to know? What do you want to know about? What, what do you know about his style? What, what do you know about his accomplishments or anything like that? How do you think? What do you think he brings to the table? Right. Um, we're pretty similar in size. I say we're about the same height. I've not, um, I've never stood like in front of him. We've been in the same room in that cornering at events. Um, but I think we're about similar height. Maybe he's a bit taller than me. Um, but yeah, we're, we're similar similar size for 61, which is where we're fighting. Um, he's, he's a bit more of a of a clincher and point scorer type fighter. I don't think he's got many many finishes. You know, all my A class fights I've won by finish. All my B class fights are won by finish. You know, N and C class I was a little more of a decisionator. Um, but no, like I think I think I bring a lot more danger into this fight than he does. You know, I saw him comment on the post somewhere like this fight's not going the distance. Um, yeah, maybe it's not, but <laughs> I don't think he brings too much of, uh, of a danger for me to worry about. That. He's great, great clincher, great kicker, but I'm not, I'm not worried about him hurting me or anything like that. I think that's a lot more something he needs to be concerned about. 100%. I, I feel like you do bring a lot of to the table. He also brings a lot to the table as well. Yeah. You're both from two very well-established and well-run gyms yeah. with a lot of IQ behind those gyms as well. Obviously, he's got Daniel McGowan as his head coach now. Yeah. A bloke that's been and done almost everything in the yeah, sport. Yeah, like Dan's done everything, right? They, they, like I was saying, I'm just, as a Muay Thai fan, not even someone that's kind of working on the show, as a Muay Thai fan, I'm pumped for this fight. It's because a good fight, man. On paper, it's got the makings of something that just could be explosive. Obviously, you bring a lot of danger to the table. He brings a lot of danger as well. He's very good in terms of cleverness in the fight. I don't even know if that's a word, <laughs> right? He's got a lot of IQ. You've got a lot of IQ. You've both been around for a long time. You've both beaten good names, right? Well-established names. It's going to be great. Yes. Right? The show itself, Leapfrog Fight Night, what do you think of it in terms of how, what you've seen so far? What do you think the show is going to be like on the day? In your head, paint that picture. So if I'm being honest, I've not actually been told too much about the show. I've been told they'll be doing a lot of things different and whatnot, but personally, I've not been told too much about the show. Um, I know me and Corey are main event. We're fighting for a title. The poster looks great. Um, presentation so far looks great. But about the show, there's not too much I know. I like what Lewis has said about um, the way he's structuring the, the rule sets. Like you've you got amateur tie, pro am tie, and pro tie, which is a lot easier to explain to people than I'm fighting C class. I'm like, what's that? And, you got to explain everything like C B A N. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. I do like that. Everyone's fighting with elbows, I believe, all the tie fights. So padded for the N class, mm. padded for the padded for the um, semi pro in that. So I like that. That I I can get behind, and um, I trust the I trust the leapfrog guys. They've done a lot for the done a lot for the sport. So whatever they do, I'm I'm fully behind. I, I and obviously the WBC national title is up yeah. for grabs. All yeah. right, 
it's a very well accomplished and well creditable creditable title. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people kind of dream of having those belts. How does that feel in your camps? That kind of does it add any pressure to your training? Does it make you train harder? Does it make you feel nervous because of the title? Um, I wouldn't say it makes me train harder. I don't think I can train much harder than I do without doing something silly. So it's not making me train harder, but it's it's got a lot of focus from me. And I really like it. As I said, like growing up, me and my dad would watch a lot of boxing. Having a WBC title would, would genuinely mean a lot to me. It's um, one of the goals I had for this year was, was to get that belt. So as soon as it was offered, like whoever they put in front of me, I'll, I'll fight them for it. So I'm just really excited for that. It, it does mean a lot getting that belt. You brought up goals, all right? Yeah. Within the next year, one of them was to get the WBC yeah. title and you, you're training harder and you're on the right track to achieve that title. What's the other goals in the next year? In terms of Muay Thai, my two goals were to get the WBC title and to get into the UK rankings. Uh, like January 2nd, I got put in the rankings. So I got that pretty quick. Um, that's nice. Um, and yeah, the WBC. So once I've, once I've achieved those two, I've done what I want to do for the year. I'm still going to fight. I'd like to go out to Thailand though. Um, I feel like in terms of what I can do in the UK, I've done done most most of what I want to do. Like getting to the UK number one is great. I think a lot of that is about who you know with the promoters. Can you get that fight for the UK number one? You know, can you sell a lot of tickets to get the right fights? So UK number one has never been my goal really. I wanted to show I belong in the top guys in the UK, mm -hmm. and I know I could just do that through brute force in my way through as many people. As I can get in the wins, get in the wins, get in the wins, and eventually I get that ranking. I don't know if I can do that to get to UK number one. Um, but yeah, WBC and the UK ranking. That's Kin, sorry, we were speaking about this year's goals, right? Yeah. And you were saying you wanted to become ranked, you wanted to get a WBC gold strap, a green and gold strap. Sorry, you've already achieved one. Another one is in the vision, let's say, it's in the sights. Yeah, career goals. Right, and I'm talking. You sat on the sat on the sofa, like retired. What would you be happy to have achieved? Uh, in terms of actual achievements, there's no real goals. I just want to take it as far as I can take it and give it for the best effort I can. If if I can get to the the top of the sport, then I get to the top of the sport. If I can't, well, then bad luck. I've done something wrong. Um, but I just want to take it as far as I can and. Then move on to more coaching, really. Like, I want to stay involved in the sport. I do love the sport. So, mm. yeah. You mentioned, obviously, going to Thailand. Yeah. Got anything in mind in terms of where you would like to go? Is there any duration of how long you'd like to go for? And what are your views on Thailand as a whole? Do you feel like if you go to Thailand, it's a shortcut for getting better? Mm. Um, I don't think going to Thailand is a shortcut for getting better. Definitely not. Um, the main benefit of Thailand is you can fight regularly. You can fight good fighters as well you get to train with good good fighters and um you get to train a lot you know when when you're here you might have um a job family whatever you got to do in the day exactly going to thailand sort of takes you away from the distractions the weather's nice <laughs> where i'd like to go in thailand i'm not too sure i'd like to go out for about three months that's as long as i can um really go out for the minute uh, but I'll go with my girlfriend this time, which will be nice. Um, last time I just went out by myself, so it was a bit boring when I wasn't training. It would be nice for us to go together for about three months or so. And yeah, come back, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep going. The UK Muay Thai scene, obviously you mentioned earlier on about, obviously it's all, it's, sometimes it's a little bit of the case of who you know and tickets and things like that. Please elaborate almost on that in terms of do you feel like if you sell loads of more tickets, do you get a more opportunities? If you're good at social media, do you get more opportunities? What, what's your views? So I don't necessarily think being good on social media gets you better opportunities, but it does allow you to sell more tickets, which does gain you favor with promoters, I believe. If you're a big ticket seller, promoters want you on their shows. Again. If the promoters want you to keep fighting on their shows, they're going to give you matchups which makes you want to keep fighting on their shows. And a lot of people don't always want the hardest fights. Some people do. And they'll go on these shows, sell a lot of tickets, and they'll ask promoters for, for big fights, for good fights. 
and yeah just selling tickets allows you to get the opportunities you want i believe i'm not a massive ticket seller i'm not a small ticket seller i fight away from home quite a lot i don't get to fight in london all that often so a lot of the time i'm fighting like hometown guys which is fun i enjoy it you know um you are fighting in london soon yes they are looting <laughs> in london. kind of yeah same ish down the road <laughs> to everyone up north it's the same <laughs> So, yeah, do you almost feel like it's a fast track for people that are good at selling tickets? Yeah, 100%. If you sell tickets, but again, it doesn't make you a better fighter. Like, if you sell a bunch of tickets, but you can't box for shit, then you're not going to go fight. You still need to be good. I just think that if, if you can sell tickets, you can get the fights you want. You can get the fights you want. You can get to where you want a lot easier. Again, you still have to train hard. You still have to be good. You can't, you can't just fast track it by selling tickets and being shit, you know? Like, you still got to train and everything. Um, I just think if you sell tickets, you'll, you'll get where you want a lot faster. And it makes sense. You've got to do it, right? You've got to sell tickets to fight. The Muay Thai community as a whole, right? I'm hooked on the sport. Right? Everyone here at the gym itself is hooked on the sport. What is it about Muay Thai that makes you think, do you know what, like, this is what I love. Like, this, I love going to the shows. I love turning up to the gym. What is it about Muay Thai? In terms of Muay Thai itself, I like the the development process. Like I enjoy seeing myself get better. I enjoy being able to figure out ways to get better. Not every day is a good day in the gym. You have a bad day. Some people see that and go, oh, it's just a bad day. But when I have a bad day, I try to think about what's gone wrong. What can I do to improve? How can I become a better fighter with this? And that, that process of development is also why I enjoy coaching as well as fighting. Because if I can develop other fighters and not just myself, it means I'm doing something right. And that part of the game, I really enjoy. And seeing other fighters do it as well. You see a fight going on, see someone on the bad end of, of a fight not doing too well, and they make the adjustments. Their corner helps them make the adjustments. I really enjoy that, that side of things. The gym itself, obviously, you mentioned coaching. Let's talk about here as a place. Like I just, I love the vibe around here. Like You all seem so close with each other. You all seem like you all get on. You all push <coughs> each other to help each other. What's it like being a close-knit gym where you all kind of pick each other up when you need picking up? Um, I've not really trained many other places, so I can't compare it to much. Obviously, I trained out in Thailand, which is very different, and I wasn't very close with many people out there. I'm quite a um, quiet person. I'm not super loud and brash with everything. You definitely are someone who does your talking in the ring. But mostly <laughs> you're talking in the ring, yeah. Um, so sometimes I find it difficult to... to speak with people i don't know too well right um but here i know everyone well we've been training together a long time and um yeah we help each other out with everything we train together all the time and again i think we all enjoy that that development um process you know we have issues with sparring we, we train to get around it and all that does it help having like-minded individuals around you 100 percent. yeah it would, it would suck if if we weren't on the same page. Like, I'm like, let's get better, guys. And they're like, no, the hard fire and smash some pads. <laughs> it's like, some people get good like that. Me, not so much. What's it like in terms of the coaching here? What, what do you like about the way you're taught? Um, again, as I said, we don't like to guess. We like to be pretty accurate with how we do things. You know, if we're having issues, the answer isn't the same for every question. A lot of people, have issues with something and their coach will say, keep your hands up and get back in the spiral. Just crack on. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I think when we have issues with things, we'll assess it. We'll see what went wrong. We'll see what we can do to get better next time. And yeah, I don't, I don't really think I've lost fights for the same reasons. Every time I've lost a fight, it's been for something different, you know, and it's just that process of gradually improving taking out what we don't need, putting in the things we can improve. And I think that's what separates us from some of the other gyms. We're, we're a very small gym, like as you can see, this, this is our room, this is where we train. You know, we've got the, the uh, weights and everything in the uh, Yeah, in the gym. Place yeah. over there. So every, everything's here. This, these six mats, pads, one bag, that's what we got. But we make it work um, Without it did almost, being honest, it did almost shock me when I came in here. I was expecting like a, I was expecting a large gym, loads of fighters smashing the bag out. And it does really show that you, you don't need a lot to be a good fight team. Because yeah. you guys are killing it. As a gym, as an individual yourself, like you've got some really talented fighters here. 
and good coaching as well. Like, yeah. and there's not a lot here, being honest. There's, like, there's you, not a lot. like you said, you've got one bag, six mats. Yeah. And that, that's the it proves that's all you need. Yeah. And it, it's great. It's really, really great to see. So the Muay Thai community as a whole, right? We spoke about your gym. We spoke about your fights coming up. Where's the sport going? How is it going to grow? This is an interesting question. I love saying to people because it always gets me a different answer. How would you grow the sport? If you could just go, yep, that's going to happen, do it. Where do I think the sport is heading? I think the sport is heading towards more four-ounce rule sets, like four-ounce Muay Thai, three rounds. Um, the big shows are all doing this. You know, like Hitman, the top of the card is the four-ounce fights. MTGP, the other week, what did they have? Kieran Chanahan fighting four-ounce gloves, top of the card. I think most of the shows are in the way of four-ounce Muay Thai, trying to be more uh, entertainment-oriented, which I think is... is um, Good for growing the sport. I don't think it needs to be four ounce. I think just the way they're going, the direction they're pushing things is fine. I don't think it needs to be a four ounce tie though. I think just putting on good fights in normal boxing gloves on a big stage, I think that's enough. But um, the promoters are doing something right, I guess. The sport does seem to be growing. But again, I'd like to see how leapfrogs do it because, you know, it's true Muay Thai. All will be told. Gloves, <laughs> you know, they're, they're putting on a good show, like a proper Thai show. So. I'd like to see it go in that direction. Yeah. I think a lot about what we're aiming to do with Leapfrog Fight Night as well is not only do a spectacular card with a more simple rule set explanation. Like you were saying, yeah. it's going to be a lot easier explaining. I don't know what that screeching oh, noise is. But, um, <laughs> it happens. Um, it's just we're looking to basically provide the presentation side of things completely different to what we've seen before. Yeah. As in, give the fighters a platform where they don't need to worry about ticket sales because because we push the promotion through the roof. Yeah. Like Corey and your fight is going to be everywhere. Everyone's We're selling tickets, don't worry. Every, everything's going to know. Everyone in the UK, if not the world, on the Leapfrog platform is going to know that that fight's happening and they need to watch it. Yeah. And I think that's a very important thing that promoters are learning slowly yeah. over time is promotion is very key. It's not just a poster, you know, promotion isn't just a poster. We'll always be like, oh, you know, promote your fight. Oh, you are the promoter. I'm trying to push my fight. You know, I do a lot of my pushing for ticket sales in the gym. Like, um, I'm not too big on, on the socials, just because I'm not good at it. Like, I, I could improve, you know, but um, yeah. Do you think there should be more education on fighters, how to sell tickets? Um, maybe, I definitely think it's out there. If you really wanted to look into it, I definitely think the information you'd need is out there. I just think the the reward for selling tickets isn't that great. You know, a five or a ticket for some shows, some shows a 10 or a ticket, um, and it's okay. But in the, and again, you sell tickets, get good fights, right? But I think most fighters invest their time into their training and into their jobs. You know, I think with anyone, it's easy to balance two things, you know, your training and your job, or your training and something else, your training and your family life. It's difficult to put three things on one plate. You know, when you're trying to balance a social life, a job, Financial. training, exactly. It's tricky. Two things you can do. And I think social media is one of those things you do need to focus on if you want to grow it. You can't just half ass it. Mm. Yeah, I, no, I completely agree with you. And trying to put a roof over your head for some people, obviously some people are very lucky to have financial aid with their parents or something, yeah. especially being younger in the sport. But when you're an adult almost, you've got the responsibilities of maybe children or even just putting food in your stomach. Yeah, You've got things to pay for. Yeah. And there isn't an awful lot of money in Muay Thai at the moment. Right? There's a big potential for it. And it's getting better. Yeah. I like we're saying, it's getting better. Things need to be paid for. Like, yeah. you've got bills, you've got food, you've got all this. And, and just getting a five or a ticket, like you said, it's not enough. Yeah, You've, you've got to have a job. You've got to have your, either a job as a, a PT full-time or you've got to be very, very good at selling tickets yeah. and fighting regularly. Yeah. Like, that, that's how it works. To touch up on kind of just finishing off here. Sorry, I don't know what that is. There's a very squeaky noise. Something is, I think it's these fans or something. It's annoying. It's every day. It's every day. <laughs> Training at Salva <Salvador>. <laughs> <laughs> To kind of finish off, mate, <clears throat> what would you like to say to kind of anyone that's been there throughout your career? Anyone that you might want to thank for these two big, massive fights you've got coming up? Yeah. And yeah, just anything you want to say as a final thought? Um, you know, those people that have been there for me know they've been there for me. So thank you to, to all of you guys. I'm sure some of you will be watching it, some of you won't. But if you can't get on LeapFrog, watch it, you know. Um, 
yeah, like I wouldn't be where I am without a lot of the people that have, have supported me through this. But a lot of it is my own hard work, and I do want to credit myself for that as well. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone that's helped. But yeah, it's good. Mate, thanks for your time. I appreciate yeah, it. You, you the man. You the man, Tyler. Um, guys, tune in to watch Tyler on Sunday on Aura More. And obviously in June, we've got the huge, huge domestic clash with Corey Chettle on Leapfrog Fight Night. That's all I can say, really. I think we've sold it enough. Have a great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever. Peace out. Thank you.